What up, Fight World? It's your boy Ego, and I'm back with some more boxing. You see it. Danny Swift Garcia preparing for his August 1st bout with Pauli Malignaggi at the Barclays on PBC ESPN. Now, I want to shed some light on Danny Garcia. He's done some recent interviews. I want to respond to those. And him and his team, Danny Garcia says he feels stronger at the weight. He's no longer having to go to camp to cut a bunch of weight. He's more or less focusing on, on the game plan, which is good. And you got a lot of guys in the game. There's only a select few guys who actually fight close to their walking around weight. I could see Danny Garcia until he has to drop some pounds because if you watch like the Lucas Matisse, Lamont Peterson fight when Matisse stretched Peterson, he was in the crowd. Danny Garcia was in the crowd, broad shoulders, real stocky. So I could tell he has to cut weight and his walking around weight is um, higher like a, a good amount higher than what he actually fights at. So he said he was struggling to make 140, and now at 47 he feels stronger. He'll have an easier time cutting off the ring. Angel Garcia made some bold statements also. He says Danny Garcia will eat everybody up at 147, so let's see it. To me, this is a do-or-die fight August 1st against Pauli Malignaggi. And this is how I can tell who knows boxing and who doesn't because people always use these triangle theories and, and weird things to make their point. But this is not that bad of a fight for a first fight at welterweight, period. Styles make fights. People keep bringing up these triangle theories about how Sean Porter ran through Pauli Malignaggi. That's great. That's Sean Porter. Sean Porter has literally nothing to do with Danny Garcia. I don't even know if they're friends. They have nothing to do with each other. Styles make fights. These theories simply do not work. Especially, and again, this is how I know who knows their boxing. Because some of the comparisons you guys make are apples and tangerines tangerines and bananas like they have no correlation sean porter is a certified welterweight who had been fighting at welterweight he was a champion when he steamrolled Pauli malignaggi and he's an aggressive mauling come forward fighter whereas danny garcia is a bit more patient he's more of a counter puncher right and it's his first fight at welterweight so sean porter had momentum going into the Pauli malignaggi fight as he was a champion defending his belt Danny Garcia doesn't have that type of momentum. What he does have is, in his last three fights, only one of them is a solid, undisputable type of win. And that was against a weak competition in Rod Salka. But two of those other fights with Mauricio Herrera and Lamont Peterson were highly controversial. And a lot of people thought he lost those fights. So this is his first fight at welterweight. And he's, he's not a champion. He's not coming in with a lot of momentum. In fact, his last performance... A lot of people clowned him and said he lost that fight to Lamont Peterson versus Sean Porter. He steamrolled Pauli Malignaggi, but he was a champion and he was defending and he had the he had the confidence. So and, and their styles are totally different. So that's how I know who knows their stuff. Not a bad fight. Is it the the most impactful fight at welterweight? No, but those things will come within time. So let's see how Pauli Malignaggi holds up. And the funny thing is, a lot of people complaining and shitting on this fight were the ones that said Pauli Malignaggi edged it versus Adrian Broner. So if Pauli Malignaggi, not too long ago, gave Broner a run for his money, who was undefeated at the time, then it's not out of the question for him to at least trouble Danny Garcia or maybe even beat him. But e either way, this like I said, this is a do-or-die fight. Even if Danny Garcia wins, but he wins and he struggles, I think his stock goes down. Like, people are expecting a spectacular... Eric Morales 2, Zab Judah type of performance where you, you pretty easily dominate. You know what I mean? Pauli Malignaggi, he's been inactive for a while because last fight was the Sean Porter fight last year and he got knocked out. So even if he struggles and wins a split decision, 
it's not going to look good because if you look at his last three fights, like I said, two of them were controversial, Peterson and Herrera. So if he struggles, even though he wins or gets what they call a gift decision, people are already calling him Danny Gift Garcia. So if he gets that type of decision over Polly, it's not going to be a good look. So this is, to me, a risky and dangerous fight because Pauly Malignaggi exudes the same style that has showed and given Danny Garcia problems in two of his last three fights. Not a bad fight. And let's say he does shine and he looks spectacular, then it opens the floodgates for a lot of great fights, some more realistic than others. I would love to see Garcia versus Timothy Bradley. Can you imagine that, especially with how... Timothy Bradley's been fighting with this chip on his shoulder and trying to show these young boys and and throw wild punches. Danny Garcia versus Pacquiao. Again, I don't know how likely those fights would happen with Top Rank and Al Heyman, but even on the Al Heyman side, you got guys like Keith Thurman, Maidana, if he can get his weight under control. You got Amir Khan at 147. I would love and give Amir Khan tons of credit if they had that rematch at 147. Amir Khan made the jump before Danny Garcia, so he has more experience at the weight. He says he feels good at the weight. Danny Garcia is saying, now I'll feel better and stronger because I'm not having to cut so much weight. And there's a psychological advantage that Garcia would bring into that fight. But then also Khan is um, trying to fight more of a measured approach with Virgil Hunter ever since that knockout. And this will be the first time Khan stepped foot in the ring with someone who I considered a big puncher since Danny Garcia. But then on the flip side, Danny Garcia, it looks like he's been getting outboxed in a couple of his recent fights. And Khan is, is a master at outboxing people, and he's very fast. So I would give full credit to the winner of that fight. So let's see what happens August 1st with Pauli Malignaggi. And if he does emerge as the winner in, in a clean-cut way or, or whatever, then I think there's a lot of openings for Danny Garcia at welterweight. And the division's already stacked before he even got there. So I would love to see how it looks if he does emerge as a winner. Drop me a comment. Let me know what you think. Make sure you like my video. As always, hate, comment, and subscribe. Till next video is Ego, signing off. Hey.